Hi, I'm Emil Kressel. This is the first in a pair of videos about the fundamentals of focus. In the first video here, I'll talk about the productive thinking process. In the second video, I will give some tools and tips about maintaining your focus and concentration so that you can be more engaged with whatever it is you happen to be doing. The reason that I developed this diagram is because as I was coaching people and organizations, it became clear to me that there are a lot of people out there who didn't understand that the tools and tips and tricks that they might be getting for being more productive uh, need to be applied in a certain way. If, and if you don't understand a productive thinking process, those tools and tri tips and tricks are not going to be very useful, if at all. And so you need to understand the sort of pattern that we go through uh, during a, a thought process or the kind of rhythm we have throughout the day. And when you understand that, you can be more effective thinkers, more productive thinkers, and more productive and effective learners. And that uh, productive thinking and learning are very closely aligned. So my hope and intent here is that people will be able to learn from this diagram and these concepts so that they can apply their their own tools and, and techniques for productivity and be le better learners and problem solvers. So this uh, diagram has three different dimensions. The first dimension on our y-axis is productivity. The second dimension on our x-axis is time and the third dimension is effort and that's indicated by the size of these circles, okay? So the larger the circle, the, the greater the effort. And in the thinking process, uh, the, the, your first step is always going to be system one thinking, and that's your gut reaction, impulsive thinking. And you hear people say things once in a while about how they like to think from their gut, they're gut thinkers, and we all would like to be gut thinkers, impulsive thinkers, because during the whole thinking and learning process, we're facing resistance in the form of distraction. So if we could do everything by gut thinking, that would be a, a wonderful thing, but it's not always the best way to problem solve, and rarely, if ever, is it the right, the right way to, to learn something new. It's often, it, more effort is required, and you see more productivity that way. And that gets into system two thinking. Now, one of the things that can happen is that people don't realize that because it requires effort and time, you eventually will get tired. You'll hit a fatigue line, right? And what sometimes people will do is they'll keep putting the same amount of effort into this process of trying to solve a problem or working on whatever they're doing or trying to learn something new. And then their productivity keeps lagging and that causes people to get frustrated and kind of beat themselves up and they put in more effort and they see less productivity causing more frustration and then they keep sinking further and further down. Now you have a real problem because it's not just about not being as productive. It's not even about not being productive. At this point, you're below the line. At this point, you are um, really uh, counterproductive and you're suffering from what's known as directed attention fatigue. Now, we talk about concentration of focus in, in sort of a currency. We say that we're paying attention to something, right? And when you are suffering from a directed attention fatigue, you are at the mercy of distraction. You are insolvent, you're, you're bankrupt. You don't have anything to really pay with. Everything is a reaction to the distractions around you, meaning that you're not able to make any real forward momentum or progress. The somewhat good news is that you can get yourself out of this insolvency with what's known as attention restorative theory. The idea here is that you can regain that currency so you can pay attention again by getting away from all the distractions around you. And as we all know, that is a lot easier said than done, especially as we're working from home. We have constant distractions from all corners of our life. But the best way to really practice attention restorative theory is by getting outside. And again, we can only control what we have control over. 
But by getting outside, you, you're, it's your best bet for dissipating distractions so that you re can regain solvency so that you can pay attention. But we don't want to get to that point of bankruptcy, right? We want to try and maintain our productivity. And so this is what you do. You spin down, you stop putting as much effort into what you are doing in terms of trying to focus or work on a problem, or whatever it is you're doing, learning something. And then you can have some more energy to sustain productivity, wind down again. And this period of winding down is known as the diffuse mode or default mode or mind wandering mode. And it's really important that you are conscious and, and cognitive of the fact that you need to have this period of, of wind down. The way that this looks in practice is you uh, step away from whatever it is you're working on. And doesn't mean that you necessarily actively just stop thinking about whatever it is you're doing, learning or problem solving or thinking critically about something. It just means you're getting a different perspective. There are a lot of anecdotes about people who practice it in this way. So um, Thomas Edison, Salvador Dali, Einstein are said to have been working on something that was a really grueling problem, gnarly problem they're trying to solve. And when they got tired, they hit that fatigue line. They'd stop and they'd sit down, hold something in their hand, like ball bearings or a stopwatch. And as soon as they started to nod off, they'd drop it, from, they would fall from their hands and that would wake them up and get going. Now, um, that's an anecdote, obviously, and we live in a world where that kind of luxury of being able to nod off in the middle of the day to get back out of our work is sometimes hard to even imagine. But conceptually, this is what it's about. If another way of thinking about it is you're working on something, you get up, you know, walk around the block um, back in the real world, and hopefully we can go to a museum and walk around a museum or stop by a coworker's office for, for a few minutes. Again, not necessarily stopping what we're working on it, but looking at it from a different perspective. That's really important because this is how we learn. This is how we start to really understand things by making connections with things in our, our mind that we already do have a more thorough or solid understanding of. That's how we really make progress on problem solving or learning something new with that networking, making those connections, those neural connections and uh, mapping, it, mapping it to things that we already know. And by having those that stop in that wind down period, the diffuse mode, mind wandering mode, that can really help us have a much thorough understanding of what we're learning. Sometimes we meet people who have studied really hard and um, about any given subject, but they don't really know how to apply it or they don't really know how to explain it. And it's often because they haven't gone through that period of really making, absorbing that information and understanding how it applies in, in, the, in real context in the, in the real world. Now, you'll notice that there is this kind of pattern or a rhythm that we, we see here, right? This kind of wave. And it's really important, fundamental to understand the, the productive thinking process to understand alternating rhythm. You've heard about REM sleep and circadian rhythm. Um, maybe you, you've heard of BRAC, the, um, the uh, basic rest activity cycle. And during the nighttime, what happens is we go through this dream state and we go through this restorative process. Our bodies shut down. We become uh, paralyzed in sleep so that we can uh, restore our energy in our physical selves and our mental selves. And that uh, fluctuates through the night, right? Um, REM becomes longer and shorter depending on what cycle we are, where we are in the cycle. But the cycle doesn't stop during our um, waking state. We have a cycle of restoration and consumption and digestion through, throughout our, uh, our waking day as well. And it's important that you understand this because if you don't, if you're always consuming information and pushing and pushing yourself to do something, you're not going to be productive. You're not going to be able to digest that information. You're not going to be able to recuperate the energy and resources and mental capacity that you need in order to be really productive in what you're thinking about, what you're learning, and what you are problem solving, whatever it might be. So it's critical that you understand that there's a rhythm 
to what you understand. And your, your rhythm is unique to you. So you also need to understand that for some people are more productive in the early morning or late morning or afternoon. You maybe are more productive in, in the late afternoon or maybe into the evening. And, and knowing that is going to really help you understand how to organize your, your work, those things that really require your concentration, then maybe try and place them in an area during the day when possible, when it's in your control, obviously, where you're able to have longer bouts of concentration. Okay? And that, that can help you um, be more effective and efficient in, in, your, in your work. Now, this period of system two thinking uh, is also, you can think of it as the central executive mode. And it's also very important to understand that this period of thinking is um, where you're going to get your most efficiency, where you're going to be most productive in your thinking process. Tony Schwartz from the Energy Project talks about how it varies around 90 to 120 minutes, uh, you know, depending on how much energy you have and focus you have. And I think that there's actually more variation in that. And it's really important to understand what is going to cause that uh, malleability of the central executive mode for you or for what you're, you're working on. And that's really important today, maybe in particular, because one of the things that can push that line to the left, meaning decreases the span of time where you're going to have your central executive mode uh, period of thinking, is anxiety. Now, a couple of things to think about when we talk about this. One, lots of reason for anxiety in the world right now. And, and so the fact that you're facing a lot of stress and anxiety it's going to affect how long you're going to be able to focus on something. And so be aware of that and be okay with that. Again, we can only control what we have the ability to control. Um, the other thing to, to remember about anxiety, you know, um, is Csikszentmihalyi, uh, Csikszentmihalyi, the positive psychologist talks about the fact that when you are, you have very little skill or ability and you're facing something that's highly challenging, that's going to cause anxiety. So even in a, in a normal state, when we're learning something new or facing a problem that we don't have any context to, again, no network context to, then that's going to cause anxiety. But as we gain more skill and ability, even though that thing that we're working on may still be highly challenging, that's actually a good thing because that's when we start to face flow, which Mihai Sheik sent me high calls flow. That cross section of something that's highly challenging, but we're also really skilled at. So as we work to uh, have gain our skill on whatever it is we're learning, say we're uh, learning how to play the piano or new, learning a new language, at first we could might face a lot of anxiety because we have no context, we don't have any traction to get moving on something. But incrementally, as we move forward and gain more skill and ability, more control over what we're learning or problem solving, then we eventually get into arousal and then even the state of flow where time just sort of slips away. We have no concept of it. We have these long, long bouts of central executive mode thinking. And that's a great thing. We still have to be cognizant, however, of our body wearing down, even though time may be slipping away, we still have to be make sure that we go into that spin down diffuse mode thinking so that we can get different perspective, regain our energy to main, maintain our productivity. Now, the people, who, there are people who don't understand this concept, you know, whether it's this rhythm or the, the idea of flow and how we need to get into a state of incremental learning and problem solving, um, they're an advantage. People who don't understand it, when they, they get frustrated, they do a couple things. They'll hit that fatigue line really early, way, way before 90 minutes. And they get a lot of frustration and they throw up their hands and say, I don't get it. This is impossible. I, I just, immediate resistance. Or they go through this cycle and then they, they hit the fatigue line early and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing and they get worse and worse results. And they, cause they don't understand that they should have taken a break and gotten different perspective. Now, those people have what's known as a fixed mindset. 
because they think the harder I try, the worse it gets, or I, I immediately don't get it and I give up. And so they're not going to be able to be very good problem solvers. And they're not going to be that great of critical thinkers. And they're not going to be uh, very good learners. Now, it might be that for other things, that doesn't mean their entire you know, personality and, and person is a fixed mindset. It might be dependent on, on what they might happen to be doing. Like, I'm not a numbers person. I'm not a language person. I'm not a social person because they just don't even want to face the resistance and frustration they get when they try and work on those things. But people who do understand that this is an incre incremental process, the same way it would be for physical training, I've never run before, haven't run for years, and I go and try and run a marathon, it's not going to work. I'm going to hurt myself, and it's going to be awful. But if I know that I need to, needs to be incremental, I need to just, you know, start walking and then start running in, in increments, and eventually I might uh, be able to run a marathon because of the buildup of strength that I'm getting. Same thing with productive thinking. You need to just keep working on it until you're able to gain that ability and skill where you'll have longer bouts of central executive mode thinking and then you have that growth mindset allows you to be a, a better learner problem solver and thinker okay so um the other thing about central executive mode thinking is that this is also where you can practice um deliberate practice which is um you have a very specific thing that you're focusing on when you're learning you don't try and learn the entire you know, Spanish language. You focus on one part of it when you are trying to learn. You also set specific goals for those periods. And if you have a coach, you can sort of keep an eye on how you are doing. That can also be very helpful. That all happens in that same span of that um, central executive mode thinking. It's going to vary depending upon where you are as you're learning this, uh, this new thing that you might happen to be doing. And it's important to understand that so you don't get fatigued and tired and frustrated right away and think it's not for me. It's not my cup of tea. It's incremental and know that as you gain more control and ability over what you're learning, that's going to, that's going to expand and uh, you're going to have longer bouts where you're going to have um, better stretches of deliberate practice. So the effective filter um, is something to be aware of too. When we have a lot of distractions or anxiety that, and you're trying to learn in that environment, you're not going to be effective. This is really effective. This is really important for children to uh, children who face anxiety and a lot of distractions in, in their, in their lives. They go to school or try and learn something and it just doesn't stick with them. And it's a very frustrating experience and they can have a tendency to be, have a fixed mindset as well too, which is really unfortunate nobody really can be effective learner in high stress situations and you, you need to be aware of that for yourself as an adult learner as well knowing that all the distractions that we have in in the world today the anxiety that they cause in your home environment where you have your kids or your pets or your family you know demanding your attention uh, it's going to make it difficult for you to learn it's not your fault that's not something that you should feel frustrated with yourself about. It just means you're gonna to have to adjust how you learn, how your problem solve, because you're not gonna be effectively learn or problem solve because of that effective filter uh, situation, okay? Um, there are other things that can, you can do to push that fatigue line further, keeping in mind that it doesn't mean you can, it's indefinite. Right? It just means you can have longer bouts of central executive mode or deliberate practice. And a uh, few of those ways are to be my, practice mindfulness and meditation and be conscious of a good, healthy diet and get exercise. These are all things we already know, especially when we talk about diet and exercise. If you're not eating well, if you're not getting sleep, Obviously, that central executive mode is going to be very short. You're going to have short bouts of focus. And again, we sometimes don't have control over that. We have a new baby or kids are waking up in the middle of the night, so we're not getting a good, a good night's sleep. And so just expect that you're not going to have long bouts of focus and concentra concentration during that period because we're human beings. And that's just the way life is. 
Mindfulness is a practice of focusing on one thing with intensity. Uh, the uh, common exercise with mindfulness is uh, eating a raisin and just being really conscious of the whole experience, the texture of the raisin, the taste of the raisin, everything about it. And the reason why this is a good exercise for maintaining your focus, because it helps you really focus your attention on one, one thing. And the other kind of, kind of the other side of this is, is meditation, which is the practice of recognizing distractions or thoughts as they come to you and then just releasing them away. Um, it, the analogy is either looking at clouds as they pass through the sky as our ideas or thoughts uh, as they come to you and just letting them dissipate or, or uh, something on a river where your thoughts come to you and you let them flow down a river in a way. And that practice, it's not emptying your mind, it's recognizing the thoughts as they come to you and letting them go. And so with those the two things together, mindfulness and meditation are a great way because that's exactly what you're doing in that central executive mode. You're recognizing, okay, there's this thing that's distracting me when I'm trying to focus on this. I'm not going to get frustrated about it. I'm recognizing it. I'm letting it go. And then mindfulness, of course, I'm really honing in on the whole experience of this problem solving of learning this new thing. So the practice of those things helps you as a human being in life in general, but it also really helps you maintain your focus your concentration so that you can be really engaged with what you do. Okay, so that's the, the messy diagram of the productive thinking process. I hope it helps. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of information, I know, especially as you look at the diagram in its completion. Uh, but I hope that it, it provides you with some context of, of how you think throughout the day, how you function throughout the day, and gives you some way of moving forward and how to be a person who has a growth mindset and long productive um, central executive mode thinking. Thanks for watching and please be sure to watch the second part of this uh, pair of videos that gives you some tips and tools for how you can externalize your memory and work more productive, pr productively. That's a big part of central executive mode thinking is externalizing your memory so that you don't have all these things swirling around in your head like all the events or calendar dates you have to attend, all the uh, different items, the to-do list that's sort of stored in your head, the people that are demanding your attention. You need to externalize all of that stuff so that you can focus on what you need to do rather than having it swirl around in the back of your head and you're trying to manage it. You can really focus on what you need to do and those tools and, and tips in the next video will, will help you do that. Again, thanks so much for your time.